I'm Norman Crabel. I came to NACA in 1949 working in pilotless aircraft research division. We were testing models of aircraft at transonic and supersonic speeds with rocket booster technique of water. One of the things we had to do, sometimes we had a fairly simple missile and we had to estimate this, the static stability of it. There was a, a, a way of doing that in a full-scale tunnel without affecting the operation of the tunnel. There was a jet that came down out of the, behind the, the fans and it came down and it made a little wind tunnel. And what we would do is we'd make a wooden model small wooden model and put it in this tunnel. And we drilled holes in it every half inch and we put the model on a spindle. And if, if it was stable, it would point into the wind. We'd take it off, move it to the next hole. It's still stable. Keep moving until it turned. And that way you knew where the instability point was. So then you, all we had to do was make sure the center of gravity was at least one diameter ahead of the hole. And that, that worked for, even though it was a low speed test, a slender model like that, that would work for supersonic speeds too. So the full scale tunnel was actually used to develop supersonic uh, aircraft configurations. Now, another thing I did I was mostly a flight person, worked in pilotless aircraft. I worked in space for the moon and Mars. And then I worked in the hangar. And we got two F-106s from uh, Lewis Lab. We used one of them to fly in the thunderstorms in the storm hazards program. I was, that was my program. We used the other F-106 for spare parts until Ron Smith came along. He worked for me and said he wanted to use, he wanted to, to take one of them and put it in the full-scale tunnel and test it for the leading edge vortex flap configuration. And the funny thing was, he didn't want the whole airplane, he only wanted half of the airplane. So we cut it in half, literally. Mike Klebitz in the hangar cut the thing in half, so we tested the F-53 with the leading edge vortex flaps. That was in the 80s. Six months after we finished that test, Lewis Lab called me up and said, uh, you know that second F-106 we gave you, we want it back. And I said, well, which half do you want? You did what? It really happened that way. Now, my third experience in the full-scale tunnel was in testing the Wright Flyer with Colin Richard and Bob Ash and that crew from ODU. We did that in 03, and then a couple of years later, I was still analyzing the flight data because I had a flight recorder on the 03 flyer for three flights. I uh, persuaded the right, uh, the right experience in ODU that we had to test the canard by itself. And as a result of that, we learned something about why the airplane was so hard to fly. Yes. I'm publishing an AIAA paper called Unsafe, Unstable at Any Speed. And part of it is because of that, what I learned from the canard test. So I'm basically a flight guy, but I did have some interesting experiences in the full-scale tunnel.